Welcome to Around BCC, I'm Keith Tebow. The calendar has migrated to fall and the students, faculty and staff are back in their respective academic routines here at Bristol Community College. First up, by the end of this month, students who receive financial aid but do not spend all their money are due a refund. And beginning this semester, BCC has started a new program giving students options on how those refunds are returned. Prior to this fall, any student receiving a refund of any kind would be issued a check by the college. With the cost of supplies and staff time in printing checks, combined with the fact that most students manage their finances electronically, BCC has instituted a more cost-effective way of distributing refunds through the Access BCC Refund Card. Student accountant Helen Danderand says every student registered in a credit course has received the card. She says the program was established with student flexibility in mind and with an eye toward teaching students how to manage their personal budgets more effectively. The students are online. They're, you know, they're living in a very automated world. And we have students that are um, taking online classes down south in Florida and they want to know if we can deposit their refund check into their own checking account and we just didn't have the capabilities prior to the BCC um, access BCC refund card. The program is being run through higher education financial services company Hire One. Dandaran says the college spent considerable time ensuring the company would be able to meet all students needs. We did have several meetings with them. Um, they have um, 100% retention rate. All their customers, all their schools have continued to renew their contracts with Hire One. That was pretty impressive. Um, we actually went to visit. There's two community colleges in Massachusetts that offer refunds through this program with Hire One and we, a team of um, folks from BCC, went up to one of the colleges and we spoke with their IT people, their um, Comptroller, their bursa, about the program and the pros and cons, and, and we, they were very satisfied with the program, and, and so were we when we left that day. The program gives students three options in securing their refund. The first option is to have the refund deposited directly to their card, which then can be used as a debit card. The card can also be used at no charge to withdraw cash from two higher one ATMs located on the Fall River campus. The second option allows students to have their refund deposited to a checking or savings account of their choice. The third option still allows students to receive a paper check. Under options one and two, students will receive their refunds in a timely manner. Paper checks will be available two or three weeks after the money is refunded students have questions um, in general about their financial aid they have excess financial aid not sure how they we get that money to them the new students um, we've you know let them know that there'll be a disbursement in October and then we'll notify them via email um, let them know that there's a card being mailed in September to look out for it and then the existing students we've had to educate them because they're expecting to come into the college and pick up a paper check and that's no longer the case. You know, we had to reserve the cafeteria and staff it all day to have people passing out checks and that will no longer um, be, be doing that. If you've received your card and have not indicated how you wish to receive a refund, follow the instructions provided with the card as soon as possible. If you have any questions, contact the BCC Students Accounts Office at 508-678-2811, extension 2160, or visit accessbccrefundcard.com. Now in the past, we've talked about how BCC is striving to become more energy efficient and more green. Well, the college has secured funding from state and federal grants to expand its academic offerings in green technologies. The Green Center is a component of the college's Center for Workforce and Community Education with the goal of providing educational programs on sustainability and renewable energy. The Green Center is setting up a permanent home within the old Quaker Fabric Facility on Duval Street in Fall River. Center Director Julia Gold says the programs offered by the Center include comprehensive courses on weatherization and renewable energy technologies, energy auditing, and solar technology training. 
She says that the program fits well into the mission of community colleges. The workforce training that we do is something that four-year colleges just it's, it's not part of their curriculum and so we're fortunate that we're, be, we're able to get funding from the state and from the federal government to be able to do these types of trainings that four-year colleges don't normally do. Um, I think we also have a connection with the business community through our non-credit side of the college where we can really um, open up opportunities to do more training for people who are employed and then also increase opportunities for people to be employed with those companies that we already have relationships with. Gold says the biggest obstacle for all of us wishing to become more green is the lack of understanding of the issue, which, at least for now, means a lack of available jobs. I think the state of Massachusetts is really just starting out. This is very new, especially the field of weatherization. Um, if you look at other states like New York and California, they're years ahead of us, and so there's a much larger demand for that work to be done. Um, there are a number of initiatives starting in this region to increase demand to get more homeowners knowing about what's going on, knowing about the rebates and incentives that are available, available to them so that we can get more people doing this type of work. For now, BCC is one of only four community colleges in the state working on developing this green energy program. Gold says the South Coast is a good place for such a program to take hold. One thing that we're going to be trying to do is get more companies involved with the Green Center, helping train employees, build you know, skills, also connect them to our students. So we're going to be doing employer meet and greets where they can meet our students, talk to them about what they're being trained in, talk to them about the opportunities that are out there, how they can market these new skills to our region to increase the demand. And there are things being done in New Bedford, and hopefully we'll start in Fall River to actually, we have, their, part of the mayor's initiative in New Bedford is they have a group of people that are going door to door and literally telling homeowners and residents about the programs that are out there to help increase the demand, get energy audits happening in people's home, get weatherization work being done. Um, so it's a slow start, but I think we're really getting in at an important time, and this is going to be growing exponentially. Wes Saline has already been through one of the Green Center's courses and plans to take advantage of others. He has a background in heating and air conditioning, but wants to transition to the field of energy auditing. He says advances in energy technology should be attractive to all home and business owners looking to save money. When I first started in heating and air conditioning, a typical house used a 100,000 BTU furnace. Uh, and then in the 70s, they started insulating better. Then the size of the furnace went down to, say, 75,000 BTUs. And now, with even more insulation, the uh, code's going up. The same house can be heated with a 50,000. Uh, as far as technology goes, heat pumps have come light years from where they were years ago. Anytime you're saving money, anytime you're saving fuel, you're good and green. BCC's academic offerings in green technologies will be offered on an ongoing basis at the Green Center. You can find out more information by visiting BCC's website. BCC is always striving to meet the academic needs of its students. The college is now in its second academic year, offering business students the opportunity to complete their associate's degree solely by attending classes on weekends. In an effort to provide more flexibility for business students, BCC is offering a business administration transfer degree in Fall River and a business career degree in New Bedford, where all the courses are offered on the weekend. Phoebe Blackburn, Dean of Business and Information Management, says the concept of weekend college was based on student input and examples of success at other community colleges. Our concept was to offer uh, a two-year degree program that could be finished in two years by a student who so chose to do it that way, which meant five courses per semester. So we decided for weekend college to offer every course in semester one uh, in the fall, first fall. And then in semester two, in the spring semester, we would offer 
the spring courses. When year two rolls around in, some, in the fall, we're going to have to offer, offer semester one and semester three. Mm. So students could conceivably finish in two years. They could take five courses. We will offer those five courses or ten courses uh, when the semester approaches. Blackburn says, by and large, students who are interested in the weekend college concept are generally those who have other commitments during the work week, but the program is open to all. I think the person who wants to do everything in a weekend, their whole program in a weekend, and that's what we're offering, their whole program in a weekend, are our non-traditional uh, students, those that work all week long and perhaps go home to family and on the, when the weekend comes, uh, perhaps um, a parent or a spouse is there to cover the children, um, a man or a woman, traditionally an untraditional student on the weekend. But as I said, we're, we're finding that other students at BCC, you know, students can take, a, a, a traditional student can take two day courses, an evening course, a weekend course, and fill up their load. They can, they can take almost anything. So we're finding that some of our traditional students do just that, and they're taking some of those courses on the weekend and enrolling in these weekend college courses. Other weekend college opportunities available include a marketing certificate and a specialist certificate in Microsoft Office certified applications. Again, check out the BCC website for more information. BCC is entering its third intercollegiate athletic season with the men's soccer squad once again taking to the pitch. The 2010 edition of the B's men's soccer team is led by first-year head coach Tony Rose. Rose is looking to improve upon a 2009 campaign that garnered only three victories. He has a young squad with only six returning players, although just about all of the team played soccer in high school. Even with that experience, Rose says there are more demands on players getting ready to play college ball. Collegiate soccer is a little bit different than high school soccer, so one of the things that I'm learning along with them is it's a different game. It's much more physical. It's much more um, mental preparation to the game because there's no break in the action. It's 90 minutes of solid work that they have to put in. And we, we didn't do that in the first game. We did a little bit better job in the second game. We did a great job in the third game. So I would say mental preparation is a little bit more significant. Physical preparation is probably the same that they had in high school. Rose also has to deal with fitting in practice time for students with demanding academic and off-the-field schedules. With that in mind, Rose has set what he feels are realistic expectations for the 2010 Bs. I'm not setting a number goal, only that um, I'd like to at least establish a basis for this group of people, but I'd like to see improvement every week and quite honestly there was a lot of improvement from week one and week three we're starting to gel. So if I can see that level of improvement week over week I'm not overly concerned about the score. Um, I just want this team to grow together because you have a very diverse team. Uh, over half the team was born uh, outside the U.S and there's a number of different languages that are spoken. We have a young man that just relocated from Brazil a couple of weeks ago. We have uh, from Cape Verde Islands, from Haiti, from uh, Ecuador. So we have a very diverse team. So part of it is just learning to communicate and learning to work well as a team and communally. I, I want them to grow and become a cohesive unit together on and off the field. After the first month, the bees are off to a one and four start with plenty of action still ahead for the month of October. Rose is also connecting his players and fans through newly created social media outlets. You can find out more about the team through their Facebook and Twitter pages, so check them out. Time now for our Alumni in Your Community segment. This month, we spotlight a former state police sergeant who now plays an active role as chair of the BCC Alumni Association. Hello, everybody. I'm Peter Silva. I'm a graduate of the child care program, BCC 1973. I grew up in Fall River in the Globe section of the city. You know, we had parks in every neighborhood, so we spent almost all of our time in the parks playing all different kinds of games. And uh, by the time I was 12 years old, believe it or not, I was already working. I had uh, newspaper routes. I had two newspaper routes. I, uh, even at age 12, 13, I would go over to Somerset and Swansea with uh, the farm trucks and pick string beans and um, just, you know, just kept busy like that until uh, 
junior high school. I went to Henry Lord and, uh, you know, went through the regular kid thing of playing sports and everything like that. I did, held my own in school. Wasn't the, uh, you know, wasn't an ace guy, but uh, found that I was curious and, you know, became a, a curious reader. Even from that age, I was always into books and learning and, uh, you know, so that progressed, as you know, to uh, a graduate of BCC, 1973. I first heard about uh, BCC uh, during my senior year, probably in high school. You know, everybody turns to going to college and where you're going to go, how you're going to go. And for me, growing up, uh, there was no chatter in my house about going to college. And um, everything I had done growing up, basically, you know, I had financed myself, uh, bought my own clothes, bought my own car, everything like that. So, you know, going to school, where was the money going to come from? And, you know, through the grapevine, I heard that uh, Bristol Community College was a school that was uh, affordable. I mean, it, it was just a, uh, an understanding. If you wanted to go to college, everybody could go to BCC. I was interested in the, uh, the child care program. I, I think perhaps uh, in, in high school, I did a, a couple of stints as a big brother for a different, uh, maybe two or three different kids I was a big brother for. And so I think I got a, uh, you know, I became interested in uh, kids and often, often kids, and there were orphanages in Fall River. And so I think that's uh, kind of like what led me into the child care program. I hope to be a counselor in, a, uh, in an orphanage setting, uh, you know, working with, with uh, those juveniles. After I graduated from uh, Bristol Community College, I uh, wanted to pursue my uh, child care degree by uh, working in a setting, an orphanage setting. And um, <clears throat> so I was uh, taken, I had, I had applied for the court division program and was on the waiting list as a, uh, as a court officer when uh, I had taken the, uh, the test for uh, state police in the interim and um, was, was uh, passed the test and was asked to uh, enter the next class. And um, I, I entered the state police class in 1974 and uh, obviously graduated and followed a, I had a 32 year career with the state police. During my time with the state police, which was a little over 32 years, I um, was assigned to uh, different, uh, different units. Uh, to make it quick, the state police has basically two divisions, uh, field services and investigative services. I spent the first maybe uh, 10 years on the road, so to speak, doing uh, that kind of enforcement. And then I moved over to investigative services, and that's where I... Um, you know, I did undercover work, I did white collar crime, I did uh, lots of work with the feds, working with, uh, you know, ATF and the things you hear about on TV, DEA and uh, the FBI. I did a lot of work with all of those uh, types of federal organizations. And I ended up uh, retiring in 2007 um, after a 32 year career. I have three children and one daughter, my oldest, she uh, is now attending uh, Bristol Community College in the occupational therapy program. She had a very successful career uh, with Sally May. She was uh, assigned to uh, Ivy League schools as an exclusive intermediary for Sally May, but that whole career kind of folded up and now she's at BCC uh, uh, turning her life around with a new career. I have a son, Corey. He actually is a school teacher uh, in the city of Fall River. And um, my youngest boy, I have a, stood a second son, Nicholas, and uh, he's in New Bedford. He's, trying, he's finishing up at UMass uh, Amherst, uh, excuse me, UMass Boston, and he's working part-time while he finishes school up. Uh, but they're all very good kids, and um, you know, so far so good with all of that. I have uh, a niece who also attended uh, Bristol Community College, she, uh, she came here from uh, the Cape Verde Islands and went right to the top. She was an uh, honor student, graduated in 04, 
and now she's in law school um, where she's getting uh, she's getting A's at the uh, New England School of Law in Landover. So I'm very proud of her. I'm very proud to have BCC uh, in my family's life. I got involved with the Alumni Association through a combination of uh, family ties. I have a, a cousin, Virginia, who is on the faculty, and I have a, uh, a cousin, uh, Cynthia Rose, and she is um, a member of the uh, Board of Trustees, and they kind of uh, coerced me and suggested I'd be a good fit uh, for BCC. Uh, now that I was retired and, uh, you know, I needed, I want to contribute, you know, give something back to the community, um, BCC was an option for me and it's been a, it's been a good fit. Without BCC as a, uh, as a starting point for me with my education, I, I probably would not have uh, chanced even taking a state police exam. When I learned that my associate's degree uh, more than qualified me to take the exam, it was uh, the beginning of, a, uh, of, of my career. I could have very easily have uh, fallen back into working in the mills, which I had done uh, for, for a number of years, but this gave me an opportunity to um, become a professional person. And, you know, without BCC, I would have uh, definitely been on a path, uh, you know, other than the one that, that, I, that I have now. More BCC alumni making news. A culinary arts student has reached the big time, recently invited to take part in a national cake decorating competition. Fairhaven native Adam Gonzalves has always been creative. He attended UMass Dartmouth for a brief period of time to take up art. But after working in a grocery store bakery department, Adam found his passion in cake decorating. That passion has paid off as he was selected as one of 10 bakers nationwide to compete at the Pillsbury Bakers Plus Grand Champion Decorating Competition at the Retail Bakers of America Conference held in Las Vegas. Adam was chosen based on a submitted portfolio of his work. Yeah, someone can make a cake, someone can make muffins and stuff like that, but you can change so much about it and make it unique yourself, not, on, not only with um, the way it looks, but also the way it tastes. So there's a lot of creativity that goes into it, and that's where I kind of pull my art inspiration into it. So it just, it's just art, but with a different medium. Adam honed his skills under the tutelage of BCC culinary arts professor, Chef Gloria Cabral. She says Adam got to where he is today because he was not afraid to take initiative. It becomes the sometimes a student teaching the teacher because I've learned a lot through Adam and many of our other students because each student comes in with certain ideas, certain ethnicities, thir certain talents and we've been uh, very thankful for Adam because Adam came in as a great mentor. He's uh, taught some of our specialty things with other students. He's mentored other students in the program and also you know what it does, it brings people who don't have that skill yet higher. And it challenges me, it challenges him. Adam is aware of the honor bestowed upon him, and he looks forward to competing against some of the best cake decorators in the country. It looks to me as if I'm the only young adult that's competing in the competition. I, it looks like I'm also the only male, which is a big amount of pressure as well. But, like I said, um, they could be older contestants as far as what I'm guessing and seeing by the list and I could bring new techniques in, they could have older techniques, so it could be like a double-edged sword, you know, it could be positive or negative towards me, um, but again it's a big honor to be going up against these people that have been doing it for years and years and years where I have only been doing it for a couple of years. Chef Cabral says Adam's success lends credibility to the dedication of many students who come through the BCC Culinary Arts Program. Adam's a winner no matter what. To be 10 out of the country, to just show his work without having to actually prove it, to be um, picked to do this was a great accomplishment. Uh, it shows the program that we, we have a great program here. I always tell it, it's the students who come in to build up the program. We're thankful at BCC for Adam and for our program because we do have a lot of chance to do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with our students, uh, a lot of caring. This, we work to have student success. 
We work very hard with our students to uh, achieve their goals at their levels and always bring up their level at a higher thing. So, uh, like I said, BCC has come out with many different students that have done very well in the competition world, in our skill world, out into the public and whatever they, whatever they choose to do, they do very well and because they've learned this is what it is. It's a lot of hard work, it's a lot of commitment, but it's all through passion. So does Adam feel any pressure? I've done competitions with nothing live, nothing in front of people. Um, I guess there's thousands and thousands of people that walk through these events. Some of them are celebrities, some of them are well-known bakers and artists. So it is a lot of pressure. Not only is it pressure for that, it's also pressure for me. I want to make sure I do well, um, do my best, you know, whatever happens, happens. But as long as I know that I did my best, that's good. And I have to also, I feel like I have to represent BCC and my chefs and also family and friends look forward to it and up to it. So I can't disappoint them. So it's a lot of pressure. The results are in and we are proud to announce that Adam finished second overall in the competition in Las Vegas, including first place in the freestyle sculpture category. Congratulations to Adam. Other news and notes from around BCC. The BCC Office of Civic Engagement was busy last month hosting an opportunity fair for students interested in giving back to their community. The fair featured representation from a number of local advocacy organizations in constant need of volunteer help. The office also celebrated the International Day of Peace by accepting a peace poll which will be installed on campus next month. The poll will include the inscription, May Peace Prevail on Earth, in English, and three other languages to be decided upon later this year. Students interested in integrating a community service program in their studies should contact the Office of Civic Engagement. In celebration of the 223rd anniversary of the adoption of the United States Constitution, the college held a special Constitution Day presentation featuring Massachusetts Congressman Barney Frank. Congressman Frank provided a framework on how the Constitution has been interpreted over the years and how it continues to be envied by countries worldwide. That's all for Around BCC this month. We leave you today with a look at scenes from the Painting Now Art Exhibit, currently on display now until October 21st at the Grimshaw Goodowitz Art Gallery. I'm Keith Tebow. Thanks for watching.